Welcome back to part two of uh, my conversation with Tom Oslon right here on Talk with Jay Will. It's all about inspiring stories. If you missed part one, make sure you just go here on our channel and check out uh, part one of the conversation. Man. It will challenge you, it will inspire you, it will motivate you. And that's exactly what we do right here on Talk with Jay Will. We believe everyone's story is important and uh, given an opportunity. And no matter how the story is told, um, you will get to be inspired. And so, Tom, man, it's, it's good to have you uh, on, on top of Jay. I really appreciate you making time, man. Thank you so much. So yeah. when we took the break, you know, there are a couple of things I picked up. One was uh, you said 95% failure. I'd like you to share a couple of failure uh, stories. One thing that entrepreneurs are kind of shy away to do is to share their failure stories. You know, um, I think there's a, either a book or blog, a fail up, you know, I like that perspective of people failing as they go up. Uh, so I don't know uh, before we continue with Shamir Institute because it's a it's an amazing, amazing you know uh, institution you're building and the problems that you have are gonna like really, really impact the youth of Africa. But I'd like you to share a few uh, failure stories. You know what what are some or or life lessons? Let's put that you know on your journey as a young entrepreneur. Yeah, so I think uh, I think like five lessons are things you acquire you know, across your whole lifetime. So yeah. I I will um, shy away from you know giving any like life lessons, but I think I'll share two um, stories. You know, um, and I think it's really good that you you've asked this question because I think it's a question that needs to to be asked um, the more. Um, yeah. I think my biggest failure um, is um, often. Quite a paradox because it's also what people think is my biggest success, and okay. um, I think for me that is the um, work that we um, did at Grinch. And I think this is, you know, why I think it was my uh, biggest failure. I think just because in terms of like what we had committed, what I what I have committed most resources to, and uh, just seen fail. So um, as I mentioned, like when we started Grinch, we had this dream of bringing you know clean briquettes and clean cooking stuffs to families um, in rural Kenya. Yeah. You know, um, but I think from a, a really early, um, from a really early point, we knew that most of the things which we thought were important were were, were not as important on the ground. And one was you know the environment. Most people love the environment but they don't make decisions based on their environment mm -hmm. even health you know most people want to live a good healthy life but yeah um, at the end of the day people make decisions based on you know just the amount of money that they have and all these other responsibilities that they need to use that money for um and so i you know led green at a point where we built an entire model around being able to you know compete with charcoal and fire out we raised for that specifically, you know, like uh, about $250,000, million shillings we put yeah. together. A factory, we had 25 uh, employees. Mm -hmm. um, and then three months into launching and starting to sell our products, just realized that, you know, this was not working, you know, mm -hmm. and that um, I had to, you know, let go of all these 25 people we had hired to do this, I had to tell the investors that we raise money from that, you know, this entire business model is not working and there's Ooh. no way you're going to gain your your, yeah. your, your money back. So I think that was uh, um, one of those, uh, you know, moments of um, failure, but I, I, I think failure, and it's something we try to, 
to teach students through Shamiri is, is always an opportunity for growth. Of course. Yeah. I'm just trying to think, I'm the investor here, man. I've given you $250,000 and you're coming to tell me that this business model <laughs> is not working. How did the guys respond? How did the investors respond to, you know, how did you navigate that? Well, it's uh, it, it was a tough navigation. It took about maybe three six months to okay. to go through because it's always kind of initially that uh, denial period where you're like, you know, we can't still do we it. Still <laughs> <make it. laughs> yeah, we you can't never st- give up. <laughs> yeah, we can Let's still yeah. we can we can still make it. But I think, um, and that's maybe one of the, the the things that that experience really taught me. Yeah. Well, was to have one, you know, call like uh, an open adult conversation, mm-hmm. and you know, just being that I understand that this is not the news that everyone wants. I understand mm-hmm. that you know we had sold you on this dream and this vision. I understand that, mm-hmm. um, but this is the reality. Yeah. <laughs> the reality is, you know, we can um, we can you know either spend more time and we try to raise more money and try to see if this happens yeah. or just you know um, go a different route and go a different um, um, direction and um, I think that is when I learned this um, concept which I have not is really kept close yeah. and it's a concept that sometimes an entrepreneur is so hard and it's called the sunk cost fallacy sunk and, cost fallacy yeah and so the idea is since I already spent money to do something, yeah. I have to do it, even if it means yeah. spending more money. It's like, let's say, um, Salty Soul had a concert on, on like over the weekend, yeah. and then I paid a thousand shillings today to go to the concert. Um, the idea is if on Saturday I decide to go to the concert because I'd paid that a thousand shillings, yeah. I am falling a victim of this mm-hmm. sunk cost fallacy. Because whether or not I go, so to is not giving me back that a thousand shillings. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so I should not, you know, if it's raining, take an Uber for five hundred shillings to go because I had already spent a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was like one of those things that, um, yeah, and 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 and, and you know, like I think it's taken four years, and I've started to slowly rebuild some of those relationships oh. <laughs> with uh, you know yeah. the, the investors. So it's been uh, it's been uh, an yeah. interesting ride. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's interesting, man. I'm still you know just trying to wrap my head around that. Um, yeah, but <clears throat> I mean, what are some uh, what's what are, what are other challenges you know you face as a you know this is a month of love. You know February, yeah. and I'm, I'm tempted to compare, you know, relationship breakups with, you know, the experience. Like, if it's not working, it's the same almost, you know, because like yeah. uh, if, if the relationship is not working, you just you just yeah. call it off, you call yeah. it quits. Definitely, you both of you, one of you will have the most heartbreak, and you'll have to move on in your life. It, yeah. So same thing. So are you trying to say that if a, if you started a venture and it's not just working out? I I don't want to say close, you know, shut doors, close down, and look for something else to do. What I what I try yeah, to I say. think there is no um, there is no. I think most people are normally embarrassed or shy. Yeah, you know, of of walking away or moving on. There's like that aspect, and the second aspect where you've worked on something for so long, yeah. and it's like your baby, and you don't want to yeah, touch to it. Yeah, you don't want to give up on it. Yeah, um, but I think if you are uh, working on something you also need like a to have a clear mind and just a clarity of thoughts yeah. if if you were employed by a company that was you know struggling to pay your salary and having a difficult time yeah you'd most likely start looking for like other opportunities and you know playing um, elsewhere so i think that should be like a similar mentality if you're working on something for so long and you're not seeing if maybe you really believe in it and you think that it will eventually, the like some assumptions that you have that, that if line up will work, then I think maybe continue. But if these assumptions are also proven wrong, um, I think um, there is, it's not bad to just, you know, be like, you know, I have this experience, you know, up my sleeves and now I'm going to take some time off and then just try something else new. Yeah. Okay. 
Interesting. Man. So let's talk about uh, Shamiri. Mm-hmm. You know, you say that Shamiri is a non-profit organization whose mission is to develop and deploy evidence-based interventions that improve the life outcomes of young people in sub-Saharan Africa. Mm-hmm. What are some of these outcomes that, you know, you want to see uh, through Shamiri? Yes, I think we think about them like from a short-term, mid-term and long-term outcomes. Okay. Um, I think all of them are really like interconnected and related. So I think at yeah. the short term, you know, most students care about how they're doing academically. Yeah. They care about, you know, their um, relationships with like their parents, their friends, um, their peers, yeah. um, school um, administration. They care about their sense of belonging, like how do they feel as part of like their school community or their clubs and society. Yeah. Um, so at, at the short term, they're like the... Um, metrics that we we, 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 we we look at and the things that affect them. Um, like in the um, midterm, we also look, so look at more like broader like health outcomes. So like, um, does this affect, for example, rates of, you know, teenage pregnancies or, yeah. you know, um, HIV AIDS and STIs, drug and alcohol abuse, etc. Yeah. Um, how about like, um, how people do post-graduation? Are they getting jobs or going to universities, uh, et cetera. Um, and in the long term, which we haven't yet most concretely figured out how we'll measure this, yeah. you know, but we care about, you know, civic outcomes, you know, how people engage members of their societies, yeah. um, you know, financial, uh, personal financial outcomes, like do people live like financially um, secure lives, you know, um, you also just care about just the broad, also just much more broader, you know, societal like outcomes like you know innovation and citizenship and all this and all these kind of things, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I think the reality is like you know these are really ambitious targets. Yeah. But I think if if you if if someone is able to live um, a healthy life, you know, where they you know personally comfortable and okay with themselves, with their friends, families, you know, doing well. Um, using the metrics that matter to them, the idea is eventually they will become, you know, responsible citizens in their country. Mm. You know, they will most likely, you know, go to university, get employed, mm. you know, contribute to just like the broader, you know, actualization of like the African dream, yeah. Okay. You guys say that you use you use data, you know, to, you know, measure and to, you know, come up with, with the solutions. So I mean, how do you how do you do that? Yeah, so I think that's one thing that uh, I think going to university really helped me understand was just like the importance of um, taking a data driven approach. Yeah, and so what we do at Shamiri is we adopt um, a, a sort of humility, you know, in yes, accepting that we don't know what we are doing. Yeah. And we are always in the process of like iterating and trying to figure it out. And the best way we can do that is just using data. And so what we do is we don't assume that we know, for example, the problems that Kenyan teenagers face. Mm-hmm. You know, we ask them, so we collect data to identify yeah. what are these important problems, how do people rate them, like are they important, right? Yeah. And yeah. if we develop um, an intervention or a tool, so for yeah. example, we have developed a few yeah. mental health tools, right? We test them on the ground um, and we collect data to see whether or not it's working or it's not working. So we ask ourselves this short term and mid term like measures that we care about. Yeah. If we have students go through a program and we collect data on these measures mm-hmm. and outcomes, is there any changes after they participate? Mm-hmm. And because we don't want to be bring to the uh, schools something that we think works theoretically but we don't know yeah concretely that it works, that it works. Yeah. i like that man um why do you think because last last episode you know the previous episode i hosted uh, a lady called ashley Mutiso, you know we touched mm-hmm. a bit yeah. on mental health a bit and why do you think mental health is like that important especially for young people you know those who are in high school and even university uh, at, at this okay. yeah, yeah, at this yeah. particular time man, why, why do you think it's important to you know address this issue about mental health and yeah because it's becoming kind of an 
people are becoming more woke or more aware. So, yeah, so I think um, a few things. So one is historically our societies have been really social and have had um, a lot of really good social, we call them buffers, which is like support systems. Yeah. That have been really able to help people navigate because you know, like um, high school and university is a really important transitionary period where people are really discovering who they are yeah. and you know their identities their place in the world and discovering their careers etc mm. um, and so i think society societal historically we've been really good at that but as you look i think as this was, the population has been growing as we're moving to cities i think it's becoming more and more um, individualistic. I think right now, either individualistic or just at the nuclear family level, yeah. that people no, no, now don't have as much of these, you know, social support systems that they do uh, that they did. And so I think the result now is that there is an increased isolation of young people as they're going through this this state. They, you know, um, so for example, like in my community. Yeah. I think uh, uncles and aunts, for example, used to play a really important role traditionally because there are things, for example, we, you cannot talk to your parents with those expectations. Like You talk to your uncles, with you talk to the people in your community about, but yeah. now the people don't have that. They don't have anyone to, they can feel comfortable, yeah. you know, going through this, you know, uh, period with. And so I think that is one of the reasons why now we're having more and more like awareness of, of mental health issues and I, I don't think it's because people well I think on one hand yes people are becoming more woke about it but I think it's just becoming more prevalent because more and more people are now you know in that yeah. phase yeah yeah um, and then um, the second is also just the nature of the education system in Kenya yeah you know when there's just so much pressure so early in life in high school even in university, you know, there's so much pressure. Um, it's easy for people to feel that they're either going to succeed or fail at such a, a young age. Mm -hmm. And I think even at that young age, for example, if you just, for example, just adopt the mentality that you're going to not succeed in KCSE and not go to university and not be successful, mm -hmm. it will most likely have a lot of effect on your life, like 10, 15, 20 years down the line. And that is why it becomes a really important thing yeah. to intervene at this yeah. at this stage before yeah. like it, it, it goes a little bit becomes a little bit not really normal but like just more difficult to, to fix, yeah. Good stuff, man. So now that you went to Harvard and studied psychology, do you, you wanna be identified as a research scientist or psychologist? No really. What, I what's think, it? Yeah. I think that's something I think about um 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 a lot well, and, uh, and I realized that eventually when all is said and done, I, I still think I'd like to be remembered as um, a writer. <laughs> okay. Um, I haven't yet done a lot in that regard, but... Um, but have you started writing? I do write um, a lot. Um, I, yeah, and um, um, yeah, I do have a few writing projects that just okay. normally take a while. Um, and I think, I think... I think one of the things is, I think what I do will always change, you know, like um, mm -hmm. I, you know, was in the clean energy space, now I'm like in the you know, psychological mental health space, yeah. I may be in another space like in five years, like, you know, that will always change. Mm -hmm. But I think what I want to be remembered for non for is why, you know, I'm doing whatever it is that I am doing. Yeah, um, which, yeah. Is, which is what, what is that? I think for me it evolves, but I think um, at its core is you know I just just have uh, you know I, I, I think that I am, I've been a really lucky person in my life, and I think um, I am here courtesy of like you know, the sacrifices and the help of people uh, around me, most of whom I wasn't even like um, related to, I didn't even know, and so for me I think the key is just trying to make sure that as many people as possible also get similar chances to mm. to, to be successful, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, nice. So that's kind of the legacy you wanna you wanna leave is to 
Eventually, I think they want to just live life still. But, oh. uh, <laughs> you know, I think you think about this one year, like maybe after 70 years, but for now, that is that. Yeah. But they have, there's this Chinese saying that um, yeah. if you drive towards your destination, you will most likely yeah. <laughs> you end up there. So so that is what I'm driving towards. And yeah, maybe I'll end up there. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Yeah. So as a result of this conversation, uh, I would like to, you know, with all these, you know, achievements, Know, especially at a very young age uh, if you if you miss part one yeah, I'd like you to go and watch it you know but just so you know uh, at 18 uh, Tom was uh, uh, the youngest recipient of Echoing Green Fellowship um, which is an award for the world's best social entrepreneurs and uh, he was awarded in 2016 the uh, Women Deliver Social Entrepreneur Award and uh, also Anzisha Prize Energy Award. And at 19, he was named on the Forbes 30 and 30 list in social entrepreneurship and the second youngest person to receive that, that honor. And Salt Magazine also listed him as 30 and 30 social entrepreneur. And Richtopia have named him as one of the most, uh, one of the 100 most influential entrepreneurs under 25. So with all these, you know, achievements and titles, um, and I'm glad at least, you know, you carry them with humility and grace. Um, um, what would be, yeah, what would be your advice? You know, cause I think you, you know, you, you can advise someone, you know, being for, for you to be able to achieve all these things. What would be your advice, especially to the youth uh, of Kenya and Africa as we wrap up this conversation? Well, wow, yeah, I think that's tough. But I think one thing I can say is, is authenticity, I think, is is um, a really a important thing. I think yeah. it's easy in our generation to want to be like someone. Mm-hmm. Um, it's There's so many, like, social influences that we have all over and all around us. Yeah. Um, um, and so I think it's easy to live your life according to mirroring like someone else's life or like yeah. as, as you want, you think people will want you to leave it. Yeah. But um, I think two things. So one is, in my opinion, you can't be successful. Yeah, I was trying to, you know, imitate someone, but like you can only reach like the peak of whatever your success means to you if you are um, kind of just true to yourself. Um, and eventually I think there is just some more, there's a sense of uh, content, mm-hmm. you know, and just like satisfaction that comes with, you know, just being comfortable and proud of who you are and doing things for the reasons that you care about mm-hmm. um, and in your approach. Uh, and that doesn't mean that, you know, you should not like listen to people or follow advice or follow models, like 100% yeah. you should. Yeah. Um, but this all of his influencers should, you know, be interacting with who you are at your core and not you trying to be who you are based on external influences. Yeah. Awesome. My last question for you is, um, yeah, where, because I know you can't see the full picture, but yeah, where do, where do you see yourself, man? Apart from writing. I know you want to be alive. At least that's very yeah. clear. <laughs> that's very clear. And you're already doing something about it. Yeah, like, where do you, because, like, for me, I'm determined, man. I just want to do production until I have gray hair. I just want to do that, man. So, yeah, where do you see yourself? Um, wow, that's a, that's a, an interesting question. I think five, six years ago, I've had a more concrete answer. Those are the days when I used to have, like, a yeah. 30, 40 year, like, life plans. <laughs> um, but think, you know, there's a place you desire, you know, like, this is what I. Yeah desire this is why i want to be so yes yeah, so i think from a physical perspective where i want to be is in kenya or in somewhere in africa okay. and i think i will be most happy if i am feeling as a like as a meaningful productive member of the society who's helping yeah you know the communities and the people who i care about awesome. you know um, get to to the next level yeah awesome yeah yeah i like that man i mean i was tempted to ask another question uh, so <laughs> just in regard to that, man. Yeah. Like, because there's lots of people, like especially for you, man. You go to Harvard, top university uh, in the world, but you still, you know, 
why to come back home, you know, and you're not just coming back home to, you know, like get employed somewhere, but to actually, uh, you know, start up this uh, social enterprise uh, or this organization to be able to impact the lives of the youth here in Africa. So I think I, I really like that about you, you know, be able to, and there's lots of, I, I mean, of course, um, no, no offense, you know, to people who yeah. you know, go study abroad and they stay. It, it's all good, man. Because yeah. people have different life plans, different visions. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but I must commend you know to be able to go and learn and be able to bring all that skill uh, to impact the lives of people. But yeah, you know, and I think there's some truth to the saying: uh, "Charity begins at home," and mm-hmm. you know, east to west, home is is best. And yeah. you know, I feel alive in Kenya. I think there's a lot of opportunity, vibrancy, excitement, and I think there's, I, I think it's the same for you, I think like, there's just some joy, you know, feeling that like you did what you wanted to do, yeah. at the place where you love the most and you're loved the most, yeah. Good place to end, man. Great, thank you so yeah, much, good I, place, really, good I really, place I really, I really appreciate I you're, you're welcome. Conversations with J.O. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, I'll be welcome for future episodes. <laughs> oh, definitely, man. Not, not hopefully, man. <laughs> now that you are in Kenya, where you are loved and where you love, exactly. we'll definitely invite you, man, to, so we can have more and more conversation. I wish you Godspeed, man. And, um, Thank you so much. Lots of wisdom, um, you know, and I, I hope and pray that, you know, Shambini thrives and really has great impact, not just here in Kenya, but Africa and, and, and beyond. So, so, thank you so much. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Cheers. Yes. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, watch out for another episode next week, man. We'll be uh, bringing you uh, more guests. Uh, if you know anyone out there who you want to come, or maybe you're the person who wants to come, <laughs> you know, because I say everyone has a story. Let me know. Just hit me up, man. There's info down there, uh, and we'll, we'll reach out to to you and hopefully host you or host the person that you want to come uh, to the show. Until next time, God bless you. Adios.